My name is John Hopkins and I'm the captain of the Juniata Super Smash Brothers team. I've been playing Smash ever since I was born. So when 99, when 64 came out, um, I was playing that with my family. Um, my mom would like spam like Yoshi Down B and that would like, destroy me every time. In terms of competitive Smash, I feel like when Smash 4 came out, um, kind of the lead up to that release, I was really hyped. The whole way I got good was um, I wanted to be the best person like in my marching band. And every time we do bus trips to and from um, football games, I'll just play in the bus with, with all my friends. We play local battles and I would try to be the best in the bus. And that's sort of the way how I kind of got into competitive Smash. That's when I watched videos and guides and how to think about the game. Um, and ever since then I've been playing competitively. So we've played in three leagues so far um, as the Juniata Smash Brothers team. Our primary league is ECAC, the Eastern College Conference, which we've been playing in ever since I joined um, fall 2019. Um, and that's our most important ones, most, we're most um, the one we're most competitive in. It starts typically third week of college and goes until uh, like the 11th or uh, 12th week of college. Um, and so that's the one we're constantly grinding on. It's the one we have our main focus on. Another league that we've been playing in is the Landmark Conference, um, which they started a special Smash Brothers conference last semester. Um, so we played that last fall. Um, those are teams of four, and we managed to take that win um, in the conference against two other colleges. Our last one is Collegiate Super Smash Brothers, uh, which is run by someone from UT Dallas. Um, we started this league, and it's basically all the colleges um, from the whole nation, um, United States. Um, so it was the top of the top, um, the best of the best, and we went just we went in just to get a perspective of how these other teams were. Um, we weren't really looking to win, but we were looking to see the, um, see that that skill gap between us. Um, and we managed to win one game, which was awesome. Um, and those are run through teams of five, so we had all five of our best players um, go into that. Um, and we saw that the skill gap was not too far and that we can um, probably um, close in that gap um, out in the upcoming semesters, and we're excited to participate that again in next sprint. We've grown tremendously in Junior Odyssey with Smash Brothers. Uh, we had a team of three when I joined, um, and that has, only, that has grown to 12 now. Um, I think that's just because Smash is in every college campus. Everywhere you go, you can see people playing casually, competitively. Um, it's just us, it's up to um, me and the other esports players here in order to find these players. Um, I wanna say like three or four of our players, um, they only can play casually and then they didn't even know there's a competitive scene. And then when they heard about us, um, when I play with me and stuff like that, um, we kind of formed them into competitive esports players. Um, and they haven't looked back since. So I think it's all of a goal of finding these players, uh, especially incoming classes. Um, and trying to um, just inform them about esports and showing them that it's a program that we have at Juniata um, and something that they can do as part of their um, Juniata career. The so playoffs in ECAC has always been a um, problem spot for us, um, particularly we've always gotten out at round one. Um, and that's, those are single lead limb games. Um, they're super nerve wracking. Um, and it's, it's honestly, it's a really hard feeling when you lose, um, you just get the playoffs and you just end up losing. Um, this semester, we've managed to get two of our teams of three, our A team and our B team, in ECAC playoffs. We both managed to beat, uh, beat our round one opponents, uh, which was really cool to see. Um, I'm sure if anyone has seen the Twitch chat in those games, um, it was going crazy. We had support from all of our um, fellow esport players, um, from people on campus and off campus, um, and that really led us to push um, to the next level. All of our players had moments in those games where uh, I thought we would have to get the next semester to see those moments. Um, they really broke the skill level and broke the skill ceiling um, to outperform as other teams. The energy in those rooms during those games um, was crazy. Um, it was so tense. Uh, the, amount of, uh, the amount of celebration and screaming how proud we were of each other. Um, it was really cool to see and I hope we can bring those to our future seasons. By the time I graduate, I want all of our teams, um, particularly looking at ECAC, to make top eight. Um, it's a really, it's a big, uh, it's a big goal, but I think we all can get there, especially seeing the growth that we've done throughout these past two semesters. Um, as we get more players come in, um, those seedings where those teams are gonna get more competitive, so I hope to bring in more people. Um, so eventually we can run three teams and end up all of us go in the top eight, um, outperforming that way. Um, I particularly wanna be in one of those teams, because um, those, those playoff games have a really an amazing feeling when we win, and I want those, um, I want all of us to share those results together. Thank <laughs> you.
Hello, my name is Tomas Kofroth. I am the captain and in-game leader for the Juniata Counter-Strike team. I was introduced basically when the game came out by a friend that would always play in class. He got me hooked. I started playing an 11-inch MacBook Air and would just mess around in class and teachers didn't really like that. My background started in Nepal when I joined an amateur CSGO team and would practice about five times a week. Uh, I've been playing since then, on and off, taking breaks in between for months at a time. Organizing the Counter-Strike team at first was kind of hard just because it was only Max and me that was interested in Counter-Strike that I knew. There were some people that he had talked to last year that were interested, but he didn't know if they would join. So finding those people, connecting with them, seeing if they were interested to put in the time that it would take to become a college level CS team and was just a little bit hard at first, but now it's become a lot smoother, just working with everyone, understanding their commitments that they have both school and Counter-Strike has become how it is now. Uh, my primary role when I was on my semi or amateur team was opper. So moving into a more of a leadership role has become or has been a little bit interesting just because I can see that I have to use my game sense a little bit more. I can have to use my call outs a little bit more and you can ask my team, my call outs are still kind of rough. I think the way that it affected my game is just building me as a player and more of a leader uh, just because I have to think about four other people and not just myself. And having that responsibility has made it so that I don't do as many reckless plays or um, just run around like a headless chicken. And I have to think about, hey, how do I achieve this goal? What do I do to do that? Uh, the collegiate Star League season was rough at first with, uh, we lost to Col uh, Colgate uh, Gaming just because we were still a new team. We had sort of just jumped into the thing, but as we grew as a team, we could see that during that during the league, we would have the results that we really wanted. So I'm looking forward to it next year to see what we came. We ended third in our division and with, uh, we were tied actually for third. And since we had lost to the team that was also tied with us, we weren't able to advance to the uh, playoffs. I definitely see the progression that our team has made over the past six months as superb, just because we started we lost our first proper scrimmage against uh, Slippery Rock to, uh, I think it was 16-2, something like that. And then we turned around the season when we met them in our CSL game. Uh, was it 16-10, something like that. But we've, you can see it just based off the games that we've played, that our, our progression has been superb and that you can see that the players have been wanting to commit more time to it or and are more interested and more engaged in it. My ending thoughts are I'm ready to move to next year, see what we can do. Definitely things that we have to improve on, um, but with help from Slippery Rock University and Kovacs, our sponsor, uh, we were definitely able to see the results that we really wanted to throughout the season. Sean Mills and I am the captain of the Juniata College Rocket League team and my username is Unknown Route. I was actually introduced by two of my friends when I was in a Discord call with them actually. Uh, they were just playing Rocket League. I saw, I, was, I checked out the game on Steam. I'm like, seems cool. And you, the, the difference maker though was uh, Steam Summer Sale. It was on sale. Had to do it. <laughs> the Rocket League team formed by, well, one of, one of the two friends that I mentioned that had introduced me. We ended up 
going to the same college. He had heard about like the esports team trying to go for Rocket League, like forming a Rocket League team. And I was just like, let's do it. Isaiah goes by Blade XVI in game, and Zach goes by Zishu1 in game. Isaiah, I'd say, is more midfield oriented. Zach is. Zach. <laughs> That's literally what I wrote in my script really? too. ECAC, we went, we had a four and four season, so we did make playoffs. We beat the first team we went against in the playoffs, but then we lost against the number one seed. What we generally have to do in game is either turtle up on defense or just go all out. Communication between us isn't the greatest. It could definitely, uh, be better. We could we could definitely work on it. Um, mostly, what happens is either we're like too late to communicate something, and just double commits happen, um, or like nobody goes for the ball, and just things that need to be communicated aren't communicated. We'd usually like for a lot of the, like the fall semester games, we'd go down two games, and then we just take the last three from them. Usually we just are slower in the first games or something like that. Before you graduate, Daniela, do you have any like, goals or like, what are your, you know, what do you, what do you think is the future of this team? I'm at least hoping that we can take the ECAC competition and make finals at least for the other competition that we participate in. They just did that to make sure Krillian could be in the family picture. And we're on a 2018, it's Juliana College is your 2021 landmark conference champion for taking the 2-0 win over Goucher. That was easy. Hello, I am Leo Espinosa, and I'm the current AD carry for Juniata's League of Legends team. I think I'm getting uh, used to college life, as in everybody here is very accepting of what people do, and I find that very relaxing. Being able to be accepted for what I want to do, especially like esports, where it's a very kind of controversial like sort of field, uh, I think it's a wonderful thing because I'm able to play, play freely as much as I want and uh, be the best player that I can be. I think the reason why we went undefeated is not only because uh, of our superb coaching from our director and our head coach, uh, Alex Kurtz, and help from uh, Dahan Kim, uh, an assistant coach. Uh, it's also the drive and passion that everybody on the team has towards the game and what we do during practice and what we do out of practice. I think that's those are some of the reasons why I think we were able to prevail and go 6-0 and this season. I think it feels good in the heart to, you know, uh, be able to bring the alumni that didn't get the chance to play in playoffs for their final season uh, a win, especially for, especially for our coach, uh, Alex Kurtz worked really hard with us to to get to this point and I think we're gonna bring Junia to the the chip for sure. The PA Cup was very interesting to say the least. I think being able to play against schools that reside in our state and see how strong they are compared to us is a very like good experience for us. Being able to go against uh, a national ranked team like Harrisburg uh, was eye-opening and you know, taught me uh, a lot about uh, my game and how my mistakes can lead to us losing or uh, how I can improve as a player and as a team as well. Even though it was like a 20 minute stomp in their favor, I think we got a lot out of it, especially during our VOD review for it, uh, knowing what a good team like that does and like what we can do to improve. Uh, I think we played to the best of our ability in that game and it showed that even though that these guys are higher ranked than us nationally or have better players overall, it showed that we don't we don't want to back down from any challenge, even if it's a UCI or a Maryville. Am I satisfied? I don't know, honestly. Uh, 
I think the way that I performed in scrims and the way that I performed in official games uh, in the fall and in spring are I'm a completely different player. Uh, so am I satisfied in the sense that I've improved? Yes, but I think I'll be satisfied once I've proven uh, to the landmark and to my teammates that I I am a force to be reckoned with for sure. That that's when I will be satisfied.